You are watching South Asia Newsline and here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Thursday, the 14th of November. Jay Shankar emphasize on India-UAE relations says ties truly in an era of new milestones. Imran Khan calls for massive protest on November 24th for annulment of 26th Amendment. And Sri Lankans vote with issues of welfare economic reforms at stake. And now for all the details. Lauding Prime Minister Narendra Modi's first visit to the UAE in 2015, Indian Foreign Minister S.J. Shankar highlighted the growing strength of India-UAE relations, stating that both countries are now in an era of new milestones. Speaking during an event on Thursday, Jay Shankar noted that the ties between India and the UAE have reached new heights, driven by key collaborations in sectors like fintech, renewable energy, infrastructure and defence. Jay Shankar also addressed the youth, acknowledging that they face both extraordinary opportunities and formidable challenges. The traditionally strong bilateral relations between India and the UAE gained new momentum when Prime Minister Narendra Modi visited the UAE in 2015, the first visit by an Indian Prime Minister in 34 years. This marked the beginning of a new comprehensive and strategic partnership between the two nations. A thick blanket of toxic smog enveloped northern India and parts of Pakistan on Thursday, with pollution levels reaching the severe category. Experts have warned the worsening air quality is likely to affect health of millions of children in the region. A report. Toxic smog blanketed northern India on Thursday, becoming so thick in several areas that visibility was severely reduced. Pollution levels ranked in the severe category for the second day in a row with an air quality index score of 430, according to the nation's top pollution monitoring panel, which rates scores between 0 and 50 as good. Experts warn that New Delhi's pollution is likely to remain in the severe category on Friday and may worsen to very poor, with index scores ranging from 300 to 400. The Indian capital faces severe smog, a toxic mix of smoke and fog every winter as cold air trap dust, emissions and smoke from illegal farm fires. We have to face a lot of difficulties. In the morning, the air is so dark that it doesn't show anything. And there are problems with the breath. And there are problems with the eyes. And with the eyes of the patient, there will be other problems in this time. The pollution has been a lot of here. Because we come to frequent jogging. But now you can see that India is not showing here, nor is the Rastpati Bhavan showing here. That's why the eyes are very much in the eyes. So this is a problem, plus there is a little suffocation. That's why we have to wear masks and wear masks. In neighboring Pakistan, similar conditions have been observed, with thick smog affecting Lahore, Pakistan's second largest city, and the capital of Punjab province. In response, the province has closed educational institutions and public spaces like parks and zoos in affected areas until November 17th. UNICEF has warned that one million children under the age of five are at risk due to severe air quality. The organization also expressed concerns over disrupted learning from school closures. Pakistani officials have attributed the hazardous air this year to pollution drifting in from India and announced plans to raise the issue with India through diplomatic channels. 11 million children under five. Um, those who are still in the mother's uh, wombs, who are actually mothers who are pregnant with, with babies inside them, these are the most at risk because they are the youngest, the most vulnerable uh, and the most impacted uh, by, uh, by the smog. Uh, but overall, Punjab has about 31 million children under 18 and 11 million under 5 years old. Pakistan's incarcerated former Prime Minister Imran Khan on Wednesday gave a final call for a protest, urging its supporters to gather in Islamabad for a massive demonstration on 24th of November for the annulment of the 26th Amendment. Speaking to reporters in Jay, Khan said 
Pakistan's fundamental pillars and its future had been utterly destroyed. He declared that the protest would continue until their demands are accepted, noting they wanted overturning of the controversial 26th Constitutional Amendment and restoration of alleged stolen public mandate in the February 8 elections. He revealed that their third demand was the release of all political prisoners who have been detained without trial. The protest call from the ex-premier has come at a time when his party is divided over holding a protest in the given circumstances, many saying that such a move can damage the PTI and would not help them in releasing Khan from jail, which is their primary objective. Amid reported public floggings, the UN Special Rapporteur on Human Rights in Afghanistan has called on the Taliban to end their practice of public executions and corporal punishments. The statements come as Taliban on Wednesday conducted a public execution district in Afghanistan. This incident highlights a continued pattern of public punishments since Kabul fell to Taliban in 2021. This marks the latest in a series of executions, lashings and stonings administered by Taliban courts, drawing widespread condemnation from human rights advocates. In the three years since their takeover, the Taliban have reportedly carried out at least 176 public executions, with over 400 additional detainees in Taliban prisons. Taliban has also banned education for women beyond sixth grade. Sri Lankans on Thursday voted in a snap election called by newly elected President Anura Kumara Desanayake to consolidate his party's power and fulfill promises of economic recovery. Approximately 17 million Sri Lankans were eligible to elect lawmakers to the 225-member parliament for a five-year term. This election saw a record 690 political parties and independent groups competing across 22 electoral districts. Voters trickled into temples, schools and other public buildings being used as polling stations shortly after the polls opened. Counting of votes began immediately after polling closed on Thursday, with results expected on Friday. Analysts suggest this an IK's coalition is likely to gain substantial support, while a victory for a rival could lead to a policy deadlock the country cannot afford. The president, Marxist-leaning the Sanayake, was elected in September, but his National People's Power Coalition held only three of the parliament's 225 seats, prompting him to dissolve it and seek a fresh mandate. We need to select the people who can uh, serve the country without any uh, corruptions. So that's why we came here to vote, ask the vote to select the correct candidate. Take Venapi, Ani Vare Machande Dila, Hari Minisu, Parliament to Yavaneka, Yudukama. A Yudukama is Takaranatama, Mada Chandapa. A special tribunal in Bangladesh has asked the International Police Organization Interpol assistance for the arrest of ousted Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina in connection with the deaths of protesters during the protest which led to her ouster. According to local media reports, the chief prosecutor of Bangladesh's International Crimes Tribunal, Muhammad Tajul Islam, has asked the Bangladesh police chief to take initiatives for issuing Interpol's red notice against Hasina and others accused for protesters' death. The latest development comes days after Bangladesh interim government's law advisor, Asif Nazrul, has said government is working to red notice through the Interpol against the fugitive accused, including Sheikh Hasina. He had said government will ensure the accused are brought back to Bangladesh for facing trial. The four-time Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina was ousted from the top office after a student protest against public job quota turned into a movement for her removal. She fled to India on 5th of August, moments before the protesters mobbed her official residence in Dhaka. Following her ouster, her arc for Muhammad Yunus took over as the interim leader and later reconstituted the tribunal for investigating the deaths during the August protest. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night.